Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel Studios officially released a scene ahead of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania that confirms that King the Conqueror killed Thor in another timeline. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. I don't know who you are, but you've made a big mistake. I'm an Avenger, and I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? They all blur together after a while. You're not the one with the hammer. It's Thor. We get confused a lot. Similar body types. Now, we are not spoiling Quantumania here. This is a detail that Marvel Studios released ahead of the movie, and let's be honest, something we've all been able to assume based on past trailer footage of Kang hinting that he has killed all the Avengers at some point, killed everyone at some point. So much so that this is the third in a When Kang Killed series, because yeah, you know that his bad boy cracked all of the skulls. But Kang's specific relationship with Asgardians like Thor are worth exploring, based on what we know from the comics and leftover clues in past Kang appearances and he remains obsession with Thor's frost giant adopted brother. Adopted. Based on all this, I think we can narrow down the exact moment in multiversal history when it would have been the likeliest for Kang to have given Thor the business. And we are one week out from Quantumania's release on February 17th, and on that same day, we will be launching our new channel, The Deep Dive, where on Friday, February 17th, you can join me for a spoiler live stream Quantumania live breakdown. I'm so excited for this channel launch. I'm still doing stuff on New Rockstars, and I've been getting three hours sleep nights trying to get it already. I don't have time to brush my hair. So please subscribe at Deep Dive NR. Okay, Jonathan Majors himself cut a promo for Thor, calling the God of Thunder to the mat when he was asked which Avenger he'd want to rumble with. I think we have to start with Thor. Yeah, come on, bring it, come. I'm not afraid to push out. Start with Thor. I mean, I get it. Jonathan Majors has been pumping iron for the past 10 months, going from Creed 3 to Magazine Dreams. So why wouldn't he want to waste all that mass and call out the beefiest boy in the MCU the way Thor dropped in the Battle of Wakanda and scream, bring me Thanos. So now this quote from Kang in Quantumania, you're not the one with the hammer, tells us that the Thor that he vaguely remembers is the one who was carrying Mjolnir at the time of the conflict. So it's probably not this period when Thor has been carrying around Stormbreaker, which is part hammer, but really mostly battle axe. So we are looking for a time in Thor's life before Hela destroyed Mjolnir in Thor Ragnarok, I guess maybe during the Battle of Earth and Endgame when Thor briefly regained Mjolnir after swiping it from the 2013 era in the time heist. We know he he remains was aware of the Avengers time heist and aware of Thanos. He remains in Miss Minutes, used Thanos in a multiple choice question as an example. And Renslayer made it clear that he remains scripted the Avengers manipulating the timeline. What they did was supposed to happen. You escaping was not. There are also hints that he remains what's keeping his eye on Thor's life events, from the Loki episode 6 opening montage that included sound bites from the sacred timeline that were quotes from He Remains transcript that he later showed to Loki and Sylvie. If you listen closely, you can hear Thor from the Grandmaster's Arena in Thor Ragnarok. You wouldn't have heard of me. Let me put you on hold. Dance off, bro. He's a friend from work. He's a friend from work. And also, Thor from when he faces that big boy in the shield site in the 2011 Thor film. You're big. You're bigger. You're big. Fought bigger. This means that some Kang variant out there in the dynasty had his eyes on Thor both before and after Mjolnir was destroyed. He probably wanted to target Thor before Mjolnir was destroyed because even though Thor seemed at his most vulnerable during the events of Ragnarok, he was teamed up with Valkyrie and Hulk and Loki for a lot of that, and losing Mjolnir is what helped Thor discover the inner god of thunder powers. And then after that, in Infinity War, Thor acquired a god-killing weapon that he used against Thanos, and Kang not only would not have wanted to get in front of Thor not going for the head, I think he wanted that story Stormbreaker battle axe to later lob off Thanos' head. So again, it just makes way more sense for Kang to target Thor when he was still, to use Odin's rhetorical words, the god of hammers. Now, of course, we are talking about the multiverse here. So really, we're talking about Kang killing Thor in some alternate universe version of history. And we actually saw one where that could have happened. The 838 universe for Multiverse of Madness. That Illuminati definitely did not have a Thor. Now, yes, just because he was excluded doesn't mean he's dead. And normally, the Illuminati is not known for having Thor or any other Asgardian on it. The roster consists of Terrans and Terran adjacents like Black Bolt, but it has now been more or less confirmed that the Multiverse of Madness producers very nearly included Daniel Craig as Baldur the Brave on that 838 Illuminati lineup, Baldur being Thor's Asgardian half-brother, so clearly they didn't have issues with an Asgardian being on the lineup and would have needed some reason why it couldn't be Thor in that reality. In other words, it's theoretically conceivable that they intended Thor to be dead in the 838 universe, and by they, in universe, we should start assuming the antecedent to that to be the Kang Dynasty as a collective. Now there's some precedents of 
Kang versus Thor conflicts in the comics. Like there's the early 1967 Thor 140 in which Kang fought Thor by unleashing the growing man on him to test synthetic life forms on 20th century Earth so that he can use them to take over worlds in the future. But to identify Thor's nexus moment in the MCU, we have to look closely at his Infinity Saga history. For most of that history, the Kang Dynasty theoretically would have wanted to keep Thor alive because Thor was instrumental in helping the Avengers defeat Thanos and the Time Eyes and the Battle of Earth. Again, according to the TVA, and he remains what the Avengers did was supposed to happen. But there is one particular possible nexus moment in the Infinity Saga that exposes Kang's biggest blind spot that he would have traced his vulnerabilities back to. Hey, we've got a new place to buy the coolest stuff, nerdriot.shop. We took our merch shop, gave it a glow up, and added a bunch of cool new clothing and gear handpicked by the team at New Rockstars. So if you've been obsessing over The Last of Us as hard as we have, make sure to toss a Lost in the Darkness tee into your go bag before the next post-apocalyptic cross-country road trip. And we have a very stylish line of quantum mania tees, hoodies, and beanies featuring cool designs inspired by the upcoming Marvel film. MT even came up with one himself based on Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, but with Kang in there instead of a naked Italian dude. We are really excited that they're available ahead of the release of the film, so you can order now and wear them to the theater on opening night. You can exchange high fives with other members of the Kang gang in the concession line. To get your hands on those and some very stylish New Rockstars logo designs, head to nerdriot.shop today and keep an eye out for our upcoming Mandalorian Season 3 designs. Join the riot over at nerdriot.shop. And it has less to do with Thor than it does with Vision. Vision represents a major vulnerability to Kang because Multiverse of Madness established Vision as one of the earliest thinkers on the multiverse. What do you know about the multiverse? The multiverse? This had his theories. He believed it was real and dangerous. Well, he was right about both. Aha! Also, in the Young Avengers comics, it's Vision's OS that Kang's young, kind-hearted variant, Nate Richards, uses with to become the Iron Lad. All in all, Kang hates Vision. He's like 2019 Eric Voss, before WandaVision. Hated his guts. Thought there was no soul in there. Now I love the guy. I've completely come around on him. Not Kang, though. Kang hates his stupid vibranium guts. And if I am right, and Marvel Studios is looking closely at Mark Wade's 2017 Avengers Unleashed Kang War comic storyline to adapt the Kang components of the multiverse saga, Vision was really the front man of that Avengers conflict with Kang at that time. Vision is the one who deduces that in order to defeat Kang, they must locate Nathaniel Richards as a baby. And then, well, show us, Rhodey. As Kang Prime in that comic storyline goes back to erase all the Avengers from their origin points, left behind to fight are figures like Hercules, figures from myth with less clear origins. And so that gives us two possible reasons Kang would target the MCU Thor. As an Asgardian, a demigod who would later respawn in Valhalla upon dying in battle and can later reincarnate in a new form that would make Thor particularly difficult to snuff out. But more importantly, in the MCU, Thor, and specifically Mjolnir, were the specific factors that spawned Vision. Vision, in Avengers Age of Ultron, acquired his name directly from Thor's mystic vision of the Infinity Stones and the Mind Stone. He got escaped by looking over at Thor and mirroring him. And as a synthesoid composed of Ultron's vibranium-infused tissue and a mind a mix of Jarvis's OS and the Mind Stone, it was truly the final garnish of Thor's blast of lightning from Mjolnir that truly Frankenstein vision to life. Without this moment, vision would not exist. This was vision's birth. And therefore, to erase Vision in the MCU, to stop the MCU's most advanced mind from outthinking the Kang Dynasty, Kang would need to physically remove Thor from that equation in Age of Ultron. The one with the hammer. It's not just Thor, a Norse god that Kang in Quantumania remembers, it's the Avenger that used a hammer to breathe life into the Avenger that represents Kang's biggest vulnerability. That, I think, is the likeliest option, the exact moment Kang would have killed Thor in another timeline. You may have noticed I am wearing our Quantum Mania inspired Kang Rain Eternal shirts. You can get this over at nerdriot.shop. Reminder to subscribe, please, 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 to the deep dive. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.